Hey everyone, it's Kate, and I'm going to show you my almost foolproof method for sewing in a ribbed neck binding like this one. I don't know about you, but I get frustrated when I cut my pattern piece out for the ribbing exactly the right length, I sew it into a circle, and then I sew it onto my neckline, and it's either too loose or too tight. Um, let me know if that also happens to you. If you get frustrated, just let me know in the comments. So in order to avoid that fate, I, um, I do not sew the ribbing into a circle before I apply it to the neckline. And I let the ribbing let me know how much it wants to stretch. And I only sew it into a closed circle in the back until I'm sure I like the way it's laying against my chest. Um, I'm going to be using our Merchant and Mills fielder top as my example today. I'm wearing the dress right now, the fielder dress. Um, both this one and my example one are made out of sea wool, which is a new fabric for us from Robert Kaufman, which is so cool. It's um, post-consumer oyster shells that are crushed up and spun into yarn with um, recycled water bottles and then made into a fabric. Um, it actually keeps you warm. I'm super warm right now. Um, and it's anti-static, antibacterial, anti-odor, um, and you can wash it and dry it. It's, it's a really great fabric. We have it in three different colors. Um, they're not all up on the website yet, but they will be. So anyway, this is really fun fabric. And let's go to the overhead and get started on my foolproof me method. Um, so first of all, I just use the pattern piece for the neck ribbing as a, a guide for the width. I cut the length a little bit longer. I mean, you just want a little bit to work with. <clears throat> and so I fold my ribbing in half, hot dog style, and press it. And I do pin it because um, this ribbing is really um, curly. And also it just kind of helps keep it even. And then, uh, I grab my my neck my neck body. So this is the fielder top. As I said, these are the darts. You actually sew the sleeves on to finish up the neck because it is a raglan sleeve top. Um, and I've marked the center front of my my top, and this is the center front of my ribbing. And so I'm just gonna. Pin the ribbing, we're right sides together right now. Um, pin it to the center front. And then starting at the center front, I'm just gonna stretch it kind of a medium amount and pin it to the neckline. So this is the ribbing not stretched. This is it super stretched. And I'm just stretching it what I consider a medium amount. Um, the wider the neck ribbing, the more you want to stretch it because your body gets smaller as you go from your chest to your neck. So you're going to want the ribbing to pull in more the farther away it is from your chest. So I am just going around, pinning as I go, and then this is the center back. Hopefully, am I holding it okay? Um, I'm gonna do, let's see where, I'm gonna do just a little bit farther and then I'm gonna do one last pin and then I'm gonna go back to the center front and go toward the center back again in the other direction. And this way it's gonna be pretty evenly distributed and you're really stretching the binding as much as it wants to be stretched. I, I mean, I appreciate that patterns have the pattern piece with the length. I'm gonna grab an extra pin here um, with the length, um, but every, 
every ribbing is different, you know, it's a different fabric and it's stretchier, has better recovery or worse recovery. So I just like the fabric to tell me how much it wants to stretch. So here we go. We're back to the center back. I'm going to pin one more time. And so here's my center back notch. And I have these two little tails just hanging out. So it might look familiar if you're um, a quilter and you sew on your quilt binding. It's, it's a very similar concept. So now I'm going to turn my shirt inside out and head over to the machine and sew this on. Okay, so to get the machine ready, I have a universal needle because especially this, this is a woven, sewing a knit to a woven, so I, universal needles are theoretically work for both. I have also reduced the presser foot pressure. Um, in this FOF, it's really easy on the side here. Um, you might have to look at your owner's manual to figure out how to reduce your pressure, presser foot pressure. Um, I have an actually a 3.5 millimeter straight stitch. This is very thick. Um, and because I'll be stretching, the straight stitch will stretch. And also because I'm sewing it to a woven. I have a universal needle in, I think I said that. And oh, I have the dual feed mechanism engaged. If you don't have a dual feed mechanism on your machine, um, you should consider using a walking foot. Um, with all these layers, it really helps. So, uh, oh, and the seam allowance for this neck binding is um, three eighths of an inch or one centimeter. So I'm gonna to start sewing. I um, did do a back stitch and I'm really just going from pin to pin, stretching as I go, making sure my two edges are lined up and hopefully I'm not, I'm doing, I'm of course doing it a little faster than in real life because you know, we don't want to be too boring. Um, I feel like, just sorry, up oh, there, that's going to go that way. Um, I, I did stay stitch the neck edge, um, which they don't always tell you to do with knits, um, but with wovens, I really like to because you don't want it to stretch out. Here we go. So you'll see when we get to the decision point. So after I sew this in, I would actually try it on and make sure that it is lying nicely against my body. And I do, I take it nice and slow. I'm gonna have my needle down. Um, no, no need to rush. Just make sure everything is oriented. So a couple inches, get reoriented. Um, and we're almost to the center back again. I th yeah, there's the center back. I wanna make sure that there's enough room for, I'm not doing any peppers here, to maneuver these back tails. Okay, let's go back to the overhead. Take these pins out and back. And I'm gonna put it right side out again. So at this point, I would try on try it on over my head and just make sure 
that this is nice and smooth and that it is hugging my body up here. Um, we all get smaller as you go from your chest up to your neck. And so you want to make sure that this isn't too loose and also that this isn't too puckery. But if at this point it's either too tight or too loose or you just don't like the way it looks, you've used a 3.5 millimeter stitch length and you haven't closed the circle. And so it's really not that big a deal to rip it out, stretch it the right amount and sew it back in. This, this is what saves me with this neckline method because if I've sewn it all the way in, I am loath to rip it out. So um, once you're happy with it, then you're gonna take your these two tails um, in the center back and put them right sides together. Make sure that there's a little stretching going on. Um, a lot of times they don't end up being the exact same length and that's okay. I'm going to mark them both right where I want to sew them together. And then I'm gonna put them right sides together and make sure to line up my little marks. And I'll put a little pin in. And I'm gonna go back to the machine and I'm gonna sew this short edge, trim it, and then sew it down to the rest of the neckline. And then we'll be back at the overhead. All right, so I have a very faint little purple mark right there. And I'm just keeping my same straight stitch. Oh, this machine has a very funny back stitch mechanism that I never do quite right. Um, with this ribbing, it's kind of nice, I can use the the ribbing itself as a line. If I weren't filming, I might actually draw the line, but. All right, let's cut. Then I'm gonna make sure, oh, that's pretty good. And then I'm gonna trim the seam allowance. And kind of finger press it open and then fold it. And then I didn't get it quite tight enough, but let's pretend that I did. And I'm gonna get in here. Oops, I have to lift my foot a little bit. And sew it on the rest of the way. Okay, well, I did not tighten this up as much as I should. We're just going to pretend that I did because I will probably redo this and I will not backstitch so that I can rip it easily. But that's the idea of what you would do. It probably looks, it looks fine from the right side. So we're going to head back to the overhead. And when you're happy with it, you just, you're gonna press it down toward the, the body of the garment and then zigzag all these edges together. And then from the right side, you, you will top stitch, top stitch it nice and flat right along here so that you are catching the seam allowance and holding it down and you'll have a beautiful a beautiful neckline so to have an almost perfect neckline um you did see that i didn't do it quite right in the very back but 
um, you can learn from my mistakes. Um, you don't sew your ribbing into a circle until after you apply it to the neckline. You let the fabric tell you how much it wants to stretch and you only sew it in a final circle until it, um, you wait to sew it in a final circle until you know that you like the way it's laying against your body. So let me know in the comments if you get frustrated after you've sewn it into a circle and sewn it on and it's not quite right and you just don't want to rip it um, because that has definitely been my experience. So I want to talk a little bit about our swatch service. So we have this way. Um, we have something called Kate's Swatch Experience, and we have a quilting co component, which is called We Quilt the City, and then we have a garment component called Garment for You. And the winter 2021 We Quilt the City um, has all of these fabrics in it, and you get enough fabrics in your We Quilt the City bundle to make this pillowcase. <clears throat> I also make a video showing how to make the pillowcase. I also make a video showing how to do a bigger project like this one that you can buy a kit for, which also uses the We Quilt the City fabrics. The garment for you is you get 10 swatches. You can get either warm tones or cool tones, depending on your skin tone. Um, you get them quarterly. We include instructions for sewing with the fabric. We have su suggested patterns that all can go together for your dream wardrobe. They're all um, seasonally appropriate. Um, Maisie and I make a professional video showing the fabrics kind of in a bigger format. So you get a lot of great stuff. Um, both of the experiences are all three of the experiences, two garment, one quilt are $15 a quarter, and they're just a great way for us to connect with you. So I will have a link in the description below for subscribing. Um, and you can also go to the website and along the top menu, it says Kate's Swatch Experience, and you can click on that and learn more about it. I will be back on Wednesday at noon mountain time when I'll be showing you how to make the pillow. It'll show you how to do the patchwork and also how to do an envelope back. And I'll be back next Saturday at 930 to show you how to make this bigger quilt. And then we'll be scrambling, putting together all the swatches for our December 8th mailing. So you still have time to subscribe. And if you're watching this sometime in the future, you can subscribe anytime. They come out every quarter and they're really fun. So thanks for watching everyone and bye for now.